All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, Nick Walker doing a guest posing this weekend. Um, and I want to thank my buddy Brandon Barbella for sending me this video on Instagram of the guest posing itself. Now, this took place at the NPC East Coast Championships, and Nick looks really, really huge and really impressive at this guest posing. But what I thought was even more impressive and even more newsworthy than the guest posing itself was the speech that Nick gave after his guest posing um, about Sean Roden. I thought it was really cool, and I thought it was really touching, and I really wanted to share it with you guys. Um, so here's the speech that Nick Walker gave at the NPC East Coast Championships um, in regards to Sean Roden's passing. They told me I would never be in the top five with the Mr. Olympia. Did that. <laughs> this goes to show, if you block out all the negativity, put your head down, and work harder than everyone, it will get noticed. <laughs> but with that being said, I want everyone, for me, please, and everyone to take a moment of silence for the passing of Sean Roden. Sean Roden was not only one of my favorite bodybuilders, and not only for his shape and the way he looked, but who he was outside of bodybuilding. Great person, very caring, and a great father. And if this teaches anyone anything, cherish the moments you have with your loved ones. If you're fighting with your mother, fix it. If you're fighting with your father, fix it. If you're fighting with any of your siblings, fix it. If you're fighting with a best friend, fix it. Because tomorrow is never promised and you may never get that opportunity. So let this be a lesson that tomorrow is never promised. And always, always live in the moment. Thank you. Now, next up in the news, James Hollings had a couple of stories about James. First of all, he posted these two physique updates at 14 pounds heavier than his appearance at the 2021 Mr. Olympia. But more importantly than that, I wanted to give you guys James's new Instagram account. So his Instagram was hacked, his original Instagram. And this is his new one, James the Shed Hollings Head. So if you guys want to follow James, follow his new Instagram this is where you can find him, um, and this is obviously, I wanted to show you guys these pictures because he's obviously much fuller in these pictures than he was at the Olympia. I think a lot of people would agree that the problem with James at the Olympia and the reason why he placed where he did um, was he looked he looked pretty flat on the Olympia stage, and maybe it was a combination of over dieting and flattening out too much and not being able to fill back up, but whatever it was, he looks a lot fuller in these pictures, and this is kind of what we saw from James going into the Olympia was this grainy, round and full version of James. Um, and it's just not what we saw on the Olympia stage. But hopefully, um, we're going to see a much better version of James the next time he steps on stage. I still have a lot of confidence that he's got all the potential in the world to be a top Olympian. And keep in mind, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, they placed about where James placed at their first Olympias. He's still a guy, I really like his physique, I really like what he brings to the stage, I really like the condition that he brings with the size that he brings, um, and I really think if he comes in fuller, we'd have a whole different story um, than what we saw at the Olympia. So shout out to James, and again, if you guys want to follow his new account, James the Shed Hollings Head. It rolls off the tongue very nicely. Now, next up in the news, I wanted to talk a little bit about this controversy that's going around right now, um, the Arnold Classic. So next year's Arnold Classic 2022, they put out the list of of categories for that show. And in that list, they excluded the women's physique category and also the female bodybuilding category is not in there, um, but that hasn't been in there for like five years. The Miss International, they discontinued that a while ago. And also keep in mind, they discontinued 212 at the Arnold Classic as well several years back. So right now, there's kind of a lot of outrage from the women's competitors at the Arnold Classic saying that they think that the Arnold Classic needs to rethink this decision and include women's physique in that list. And they're kind of trying to, it seems like they're spinning the narrative into this is a, like this is a thing where it's against the female athletes. And that's not the case at all because they added wellness to the Arnold. So yes, they subtracted women's physique, but they added the new women's division wellness. So we'll talk about this post in a second. This is from Sarah Villegas who won 
the women's physique Miss Olympia. But if you look at the list here, this narrative that the Arnold Classic is against the women's competitors is just simply not true. If you look at the list, there are still more women's categories than men's categories at the Arnold Classic. You've got fitness, figure, bikini, and wellness. Those are all female categories. The only men's categories are classic physique, men's physique, and the Arnold Classic bodybuilding. And then if you include uh, wheelchair in that, that's also a men's category. But the main categories, classic, bodybuilding, and men's physique, there's more main categories for women's because there's not a women's wheelchair category. And you combine that with the fact that they recently took away 212, which is a men's category. And I've talked to some people at the Arnold. And look, essentially, this is what they said the reason for this was. Basically, last year, the Arnold Classic lost a ton of money with the fact that the expo was shut down. Basically, the whole event was shut down. It was right at the beginning of the virus. It was right at the beginning of the pandemic. And the governor of Ohio shut down the whole Arnold Classic, and they lost a ton of money on that. And then this year's Arnold Classic was essentially paid for out of Arnold's own pocket. There was no expo, just a competition, just prize money. And that was paid for, like I said, basically at a loss to Arnold. So this year, they were looking at trying to maximize their prize money. So they had to cut a category. So they decided, we're going to cut women's physique. And honestly, I don't disagree with this decision because what they're doing is cutting that category to use that prize money for the other categories. And keep in mind, it's still it's basically equal. There's still four women's and there's essentially four men's divisions. So it's not like there's more men's than women's. There's six women's divisions overall in the IFBB. And only four men's overall if you include wheelchair. So honestly, I'm of the opinion that they need to cut back on these categories across the IFBB in general. I think these shows are becoming too long. The prize money is becoming too spread out. I think they should have an equal number of men's divisions and women's divisions. Um, especially considering the fact I think more people watch classic physique and men's open bodybuilding than anything else. So the fact that you would have to watch six other categories just for the women before you get to watch classic or men's open bodybuilding, I think makes the makes the show too long. Like it or not, I think the reality of the situation is those two men's divisions have way more followers than all of the women's divisions combined. And they just added wellness this year, so they keep adding divisions. I think so, one of the divisions does need to get dropped. And look, I get what bikini is. Bikini is kind of a more mainstream, kind of a more attractive, um, attainable female physique. I get that female bodybuilding is kind of the most extreme of the muscular female physiques. And then I get that wellness is more focused on the lower body and the glutes. It's kind of the big butt division. Um, really, no, I'm not joking. That's kind of what it is. But honestly, I have no idea what the difference is between women's figure and women's physique. They're both kind of muscular girls, but I guess figure is less muscular than physique. I think there is too many divisions and there's too much confusion as what that criteria is. So bikini is the least muscular. Figure is the second muscular. Physique is the third muscular. Maybe wellness is above physique as the fourth muscular. And then women's bodybuilding is the fifth most muscular. Then fitness is the performance routines. There's a lot. And I think it's maybe getting a little bit conflated. But when you look at the men's divisions, I think it's very clear. Men's physique, they're the beach bodies. They're the board shorts guys. 212, they're the weight limit. They're the short guys. Men's open, they're the biggest guys. Classic physique, they're the classic guys. I think it's very... It's, it's very well defined what the purpose of each men's category is. But with figure and physique specifically, I think it's really, I mean, can, can any of you guys tell me the difference? I mean, really, most people don't even know. Like, be 100% honest with me in the comments down below. If this hadn't been posted by the uh, uh, Physique Miss Olympia, would you guys have even known that the physique division was missing while you were watching the Arnold next year, if it hadn't been announced? Like, would anyone have even really noticed? Look, I'm a fan of the women's categories too, and they obviously work just as hard as the men, and they're very impressive. But if you took away figure or physique at the Olympia or the Arnold, and they didn't announce it, I wouldn't have noticed. Like, I wouldn't have known they removed one of them. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think there's too many divisions overall? Do you think there's too many women's divisions? Do you think it's fair for the Arnold to cut out a division? Personally, when I'm watching a live stream and it comes to like the four or five hour mark and I'm just watching it to see the men's open results, it's like, dude, you got to cut back on something. But anyway, the point of this story here is the women's physique Miss Olympia, Sarah Villegas, who is very impressive. She She's crazy conditioned. 
She's got an insane physique and she makes a very generous offer here. She says, I'm very disappointed to learn that the Arnold Sports Festival has excluded women's physique and women's bodybuilding from the 2022 Arnold Classic roster. Again, they haven't had women's bodybuilding there for years. This is nothing new. And that's why that's why I think people are kind of trying to spin it like it's an anti-women's thing. They haven't had female bodybuilding there for like five years. And they haven't had uh, 212 bodybuilding there for a couple of years either. So it's not just a women's thing. It's men's too. So she says, I'm extending an offer to Schwarzenegger and Arnold Sports where I will personally sponsor all the prize money for the women's physique category at the 2022 Arnold Sports Festival if they choose to add the category to the roster. Let the girls compete. My offer stands. However, if it's not accepted, here's what I'm going to do to support my category. I've decided to spend $20,000 out of my own pocket this coming year to support women's physique division at multiple pro shows. $10,000 to the second annual Sarah Villegas Women's Physique Distinction Award that will be awarded to the WPD winner at the 2022 Texas Pro and two additional $5,000 first place checks that will be awarded to the first place WPD winners at two other pro shows. P.S. I respect Arnold for the athlete and pioneer that he has been, so please don't be negative. So please, no negative comments towards Arnold or the Arnold Sports Organization. I'm doing this in a positive way to support the women's physique category, the category that I love so much. So look, Sarah was very respectful, but I've kind of seen this sentiment in the comments of this post and other posts about this, that it's like an anti-women's thing and people are mad that they're excluding women. And I don't think that's what this is about at all. I think at the end of the day, they lost their asses on the 2022 Arnold Classic. They lost a ton of money and they don't want to cut the prize money here. They want to give as much prize money to the main divisions as they possibly can. So the way that they can do that is they've got to cut back on the divisions here. And women's physique is one of the ones that is taking the cut. And it's important to note that the Arnold Classic has always been an invitation-only show, meaning they pick and choose the athletes that they have there. And they also have the right to pick and choose the categories that they have there. That's what makes the Arnold a very unique show. It's not a show that you qualify for. They don't fall under the same umbrella really that the Olympia does. They have no obligation to include every category while the Olympia kind of does have that obligation. So the Arnold has always been unique in that regard where they only have who and what they want to have at that show. And I think that's what makes it so great and so unique. However, if Sarah really does cover the entire prize money for that division, I say go for it. Let them compete. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Let me know your thoughts, positive or negative, in the comments down below. But make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. As always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.